All right, we can kick things off now. So welcome everyone. Uh, we Next up we have Tyler um, Sheehan uh, talking about round trip latency. Uh, take care away, Tyler. Okay, uh, give me one second. Let me just share my window real quick. So, hello everyone and welcome to round trip latency, DPDK versus non-DPDK. My name is Tyler Sheehan. Okay, that's supposed to. Suck. Okay, there we go. First, a little background. I am a master's student in the four plus one program at University of Massachusetts Lowell, majoring in computer engineering and graduating this fall. I spent two summers interning at Red Hat. The first in the summer of 2020 as Ceph storage intern, and the second in the summer of 2021 as an Office of the CTO intern. This research was done during spring 2021 at University of Massachusetts Lowell and funded by Red Hat. Round trip latency is the time it takes for a packet to go from point A to point B and back to point A. DPDK is a set of special libraries and drivers that make it possible for packets to bypass the kernel and go straight from the application to the network controller. As you can see from this picture, on the left we have the typical application architecture where a packet goes from the application in the user space to a network driver in the kernel space, then finally to a network controller in the network hardware space. On the right, we have an application using DPDK where the packet goes from the application to the DPDK libraries still in the user space, then to a network controller in the network hardware, showing how DPDK allows a packet to bypass the kernel space as the DPDK libraries are taking place, taking the place of the network driver without leaving the user space. This project started as a Red Hat sponsored research project at University of Massachusetts Lowell to examine benefits of DPDK in Red Hat storage with the understanding that the current Ceph already had DPDK support. There is DPDK compatibility in Ceph, but due to architecture restraints, Ceph cannot benefit from DPDK. This caused me a shift focus to Ceph Crimson because the development notes claimed DPDK compatibility. A final change in focus was made due to an approaching deadline and issues gained Ceph Crimson running with DPDK. This resulted in collecting data on DPDK round trip latency, which is what Ceph hoped to gain from DPDK. The next section covers the programs which were used to collect data, a quick overview of their use and why they were selected. The first program is called uperf. It's a well-known and easy to use open source network benchmarking tool. Originally developed by the Performance Applications Engineering Group at Sun Microsystems. Chosen due to it being easy to use and my mentor, Ben England, having had prior experience with it. The second program is called Ping Pong, a relatively unknown open source program developed by Zing Yang Li on GitHub for the sole purpose of collecting round trip latency using DPDK. Selected due to it being the only openly available program that collected round trip latency using DPDK. The version used for this research was modified and a link to which is located at the end of the slides. In the next section, I will explain the methodology used for testing. For hardware specifications, two machines located on the same rack with a single Jupyter network switch between them. Each system consisted of a Dell PowerEdge server with two Intel Xeon Gold 6230 CPUs. All testing was done on the exact same Intel 25 gigabyte Ethernet port. When running the ping pong test, the Ethernet port used the VFIO-PCI driver. When running UPerf tests, the I40E driver was used. Next are the independent variables. For packet size, it went 64, 256 and 1024 bytes. For packet descent, it went from 100, 10,000, 1 million, and 10 million. The results of each test were the average of three different tests run with the exact same parameters. For the purpose of neatness, only the averages were recorded in this presentation. Finally, we had the measured parameters, which are runtime, max round trip latency, average round trip latency, and min round trip latency. 
Before getting into the research results, I'd like to take a few minutes to go over the restrictions that are faced during this research. UPerf has proven that in UDP mode, it takes a long time to send packets if the size is greater than 1.5 kilobytes. For this reason, all packet sizes were less than 1.5 kilobytes. It's assumed that's due to a fragmentation issue with UDP messages being greater than maximum transmission unit size of 1.5 kilobytes. A similar issue was seen with ping pong when attempting to use anything less than 64 bytes, which caused ping pong to stop working. Due to ping pong's current design of not including the ability to send and receive multiple packets at one time, there's a disconnect with UPerf, which did have this ability by making use of multi-threads. For the purpose of making these programs as close as possible during testing, the number of threads that UPerf was using was limited to one thread for the entirety of the tests. Ping pong required the use of a minimum of two cores and while we'll running ping pong, the two cores were utilized near 100%. For purpose of testing, only two cores were utilized by ping pong. The current understanding of UPerf is that a write is half the round trip and read is the other half. For this reason, the average round trip time of UPerf write was added to the read to get the complete average time. This doesn't work for the max and min round trip time though, since there's no way of knowing what read was when write had its max or min, and there's no way of knowing what write was when read had its max or min. Now that the restrictions have been explained, it's time to show results. Please keep in mind that the results you will see go in order of first three graphs are ordered by packet size, and the following four graphs are ordered by number of packets sent. This slide shows the runtime results of the 12 tests broken up by the size of packets sent. The solid blue line represents ping pong results, and the dashed red line represents UPerf results. Both axes are logarithmic. The first graph shows the result of all tests with 64 byte packets. Uh, the x-axis is the number of packets sent and the y-axis is the time in seconds. The x-axis starting at 100, then 10,000, then 1 million, and finally 10 million. The other two graphs are the same as the first, only with packet size set to 256 and 1024 respectively. As you can see, all three graphs behave very similarly where UPerf takes longer than ping pong for 100 and 10,000, but once the packets sent get to 1 million and 10 million, the results become near identical. This slide shows the runtime result of the 12 tests broken up by number of packets sent. The solid blue line represents ping pong results and the dashed red line represents UPerf results. Both axes are logarithmic. The first graph shows the result of all tests with 100 packets sent. The x-axis is the size of packets and the y-axis is the time in seconds. The x-axis is starting at 64, then 256, and finally 1024. The other three graphs are the same as the first, only with number of packets sent being 10,000, 1 million, and 10 million respectively. A trend seen in this graph is that UPerf remains constant at 110,000 packets regardless of packet size and is greater than ping pong in all but when packet sent is 10 million and the size is 256 as seen in the rightmost graph. These are the same as the first three graphs only showing the max round trip latency instead of runtime in which the dash purple line represents UPerf write results and the dash green line represents the UPerf read results. As before, the x-axis is the number of packets sent but the y-axis is now time in microseconds. These graphs are a bit less cut and dry than the ones seen in the previous slides due to UPerf not being one entity, instead being split up into two. In all three graphs, 100 and 10,000 packets, ping pong performs between UPerf read and UPerf write, with ping pong then exceeding UPerf write and UPerf read at 1 million and 10 million. Ping pong and UPerf read are the closest in the middle graph when packet size is 256 bytes with 1 million packets sent. These are the same as the first three, first group of four graphs only showing the max round trip latency instead of runtime. As before, the x-axis is the size of packets sent, but the y-axis is now in microseconds. There's no clear trend when the data is presented based on number of packets sent, as can be seen by these graphs. These are the same as the first three graphs only showing the average round trip latency instead of runtime. 
As before, the x-axis is the number of packets sent, but the y-axis is now in microseconds. The average round-trip latency is clearly a product of multiple variables, and this is seen by the graph as there are no clear trends other than uperf decreasing from 100 packets to 1 million, then increasing at 10 million. These are the same as the first group of four graphs, only showing the max round trip latency instead of runtime. As before, the x axis is the size of packets sent, but the y axis is now in microsecond. Once again, the average round trip latency is clearly a product of multiple variables, and this is seen by these graphs as there is no clear trend. These are the same as the first three graphs, only showing the min round trip latency instead of runtime. And with the dashed purple line represents U perf write result, and the dashed green line represents U perf read result. As before, the x axis is the number of packets sent, but the y axis is now time in microseconds. In these graphs, you can see ping pong and U perf write are constant with slight alterations, and U perf read is decreasing from 1 million packets to 10 million packets. These are the same as the first group of four graphs, only showing the max round trip latency instead of runtime. As before, the x-axis is the size of packets sent, but the y-axis is now in microseconds. The only career trend in these graphs is ping pong increasing from 256 bytes to 1024 bytes. From the results in the previous section, I will now present my conclusions. I do not believe that the data provided by this presentation is enough to draw any conclusive conclusions relating to DPDK versus non-DPDK round trip latency, which are emulated by ping pong and uperf respectively. Ping pong has a better average round trip time than uperf, but the difference between each runtime is a number of microseconds, and there was chaotic results mixed in. To definitively prove, numerous tests would need to rerun with constant results from ping pong and uperf which I was unable to accomplish in the time allotted. I will now take a few minutes to suggest some ideas for future research that builds off this research and its results. DPDK is currently being used on several applications, but there are a few tools to collect accurate round trip latency data. I personally found this to be a difficulty when attempting to find a program that measured round trip latency for DPDK. For this reason, I believe future projects should focus on improving ping pong, which Wellness infancy has the potential to show off what DPDK is capable of in terms of round trip latency. There are several modifications that need to be made to ping pong before this can be a reality. Ping pong needs to become capable of sending and receiving multiple packets at a time. This may be accomplished by some form of DPDK specific multi threading or possibly some other built in DPDK function, but it should be one that fits with the DPDK architecture. This will allow ping pong to compete with uperf, which already has the ability to send and receive multiple packets by making use of multi-threading on a whole new range of tests. Once ping pong can send and receive multiple packets, it would be interesting to see how the CPU utilization compares between ping pong and uperf. Ping pong could also benefit from the ability to send to specify the packet size and client slash server IP addresses from the command line, making it easier to run and automate different tests. In addition to the ping pong modifications, adding a feature to uperf where it reports the round trip latency of the read slash write whenever the other has a max slash min would make it easier to compare the max and min of uperf versus ping pong. Finally, I would like to acknowledge all those who helped me to make this research a success. First, I would like to thank Red Hat for sponsoring this research and University of Massachusetts Lowell for hosting it and providing me with the opportunity to work on it. In addition, I would like to thank Ben England from Red Hat and Professor Vinod Varkarain from University of Massachusetts Lowell for their invaluable support throughout the entire research process. Finally, I would like to thank Zing Yang Lee for creating and sharing ping pong on GitHub and the entire UPerf community for their efforts in creating a well-made and easy to use tool. Thank you for your time. Are there any questions? All right. Um, not seeing any questions yet, so I guess we can just hold off for a few minutes. Yep. Yeah, plus plus Joel. This was. Interesting as someone who knows nothing about what you're talking about. <laughs> Thank you.